Hey fellas, welcome back. Uh, this is our series on recovering my broken phantom here. Uh, if you you might know already, she uh, crashed about a hundred feet in the air uh, into a wall. Um, but before I get started, I want to just remind you on December 20th I'm giving uh, one of these away absolutely free to a random subscriber all you have to do is subscribe give me some likes give me some feedback let me know what you guys want to see or hear um, any questions you might have shoot me a, a message it's all good I'll do my best to answer it or even maybe compile a video for you so make sure you subscribe get your paws on this and don't forget on December 12th we're giving away a modified new DJI trans, uh, transmitter. So now, let's get back to this. This segment, we're going to cover maintenance. Because she took such a, uh, a nasty crash, uh, I wanted to do a thorough inspection. Um, and as you saw in the last video, I showed you how to test the motors with the tachometer. Um, it's, a, it's a much more reliable way than doing the old method of feeling the motors because feeling the motors doesn't work when you're outside flying for an hour and a half or two hours and your fingers and hands are completely numb you can't even feel anything you wouldn't know if this is hot or overheating or something so you need something a little more reliable and that's where you want to get one of them so now <clears throat> before we begin you need some tools uh, you're going to need a T8 hex screwdriver you can find basically at any common hardware store you're going to need a precision screwdriver Phillips a set of pin nose pliers your razor blade okay how you like that you need a razor blade you're going to need a flashlight a can of air, a magnifying glass, and some uh, alcohol wipes. Okay, these are McKenzie. Any ones will do. Any standard alcohol wipes, and your cell phone. Okay. <clears throat> first things first. Choice is up to you. You could either cut the red ribbon here. Uh, obviously with your razor blade what you're gonna to wanna to do I already so you know I loosened up the screws for mine I'll cover that uh, just to speed the video up you're gonna take your razor blade and basically very nicely in the groove here cut along there and do it on the other side here and do it here and over here as well uh, that's gonna separate the uh, ribbon red ribbon from the bottom of the phantom and the top and the reason why I tell you is as you see this ribbon already falling off that's because the first time I opened mine I peeled it all the way up don't peel it up leave it stuck on nice just slice it with a razor and it works much better now your next step is to remove the screws here's you're gonna remove this screw right here this is your precision Phillips screw your T8 here and here these two holes right there and right here uh, I'll point to it with this that hole here and that hole here okay and you're gonna remove this screw here in this hole and you're gonna do that to all four sides of your phantom and then when you do so lay them down in an order like that so that way you can you know what screw goes to what and just remember how you laid your phantom down when you unscrewed it. Uh, normally what I like to do to be consistent is keep the camera to my back, to me, towards me, right here. So I know when I take all my screws off, I know what screws go where. Once you take that off, then you're going to want to support it. Flip the phantom up because the lid's going to be loose. <clears throat> Before you go ripping off the lid, you know, obviously make sure you cut this, but don't rip the lid off because remember up here is your GPS uh, antenna 
and that has a wire that runs to the base of the phantom. So when you lift it up, what you're going to want to do is lift it up slowly, loose, like so, and lift up slowly. And you'll notice, see this cable right here? This is attached to the roof of the phantom. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, and notice it only fits in, the beauty of it is it only fits in one way. Um, so you don't have to get too worried about that. What you want to do is loosen it like so, wiggle it back and forth, and just pop it loose like that. And that's what under the hood looks like. There's your cable, and there's your GPS uh, with your shielding here, and this does all your GPSing uh, to get your locks on satellites and whatnot. Here's the inside of this bad boy. Here's what we're going to do now. Let's zoom out a little bit and get your phone. And what you're going to want to do is get your phone and get ready to take a picture. Hold it like this, but hold it much higher up into the air up over the phantom. Take a picture and sort of like that because what you want to do is have a reference point because what you're going to be doing is checking wires checking solder in here just doing an overhaul inspection and if one wire happens to come loose while you're doing that and maybe you don't notice it and then all of a sudden you got a wire laying off the side here um, you might not know where it might go or you might panic and that picture might be able to you know make life a little bit easy for example if you look here this wire here if this wire fell out I wouldn't know where to put it in I would start to pan it do I put it on this side here there so that's why you want pictures so take some pictures all around and use them as a reference point when you're uh, ready to put everything together now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to get your magnifying glass. I don't happen to have mine because I don't know where I put it. Uh, but I suggest you get one if you don't. Um, and what you're going to want to do is get your flashlight like so. Set your flashlight up. And then you're going to want to inspect. You're going to want to inspect these solder joints here. Uh, let's turn it like so. Those solder joints, you're looking for any weaknesses. Uh, what you can do is very lightly, don't pull hard, very lightly, just move them a little bit. Move the wires a little and you're looking for any broken solder joints that might be separating from the board, uh, any wear and tear, anything, any signs that uh, might you know, even indicate uh, a short. You know, look at the wires. See if any of the wires might look melted. If they're melted, that could indicate you might have a short in the board. Um, and if you do, then you want to replace the board and maybe even the motor or whatever the wire might be, you know, belong to. So don't just check the soldering joints. Inspect them with a flashlight, a magnifying glass. Check the wires to the motor. Look for any signs that the solder's separating from the board. And look for any signs on the wires very lightly moving them. Don't bend them all the way up because you will loosen them from the board. You just want to see if there's any signs of wire melting that might indicate you might have a short electrical. Uh, and that would start to melt the wire. Um, in the same uh, process, while you got this off, what you want to do too is inspect all of these, um, all of these cable ports. You know, check them out. Make sure nothing looks loose. Uh, go through with a fine tooth comb with your flashlight, magnifying glass, and just lightly snug them up. Push them down a little bit, like so. Uh, and again, looking for signs that might show a possible short. Anything, you know, if a wire looks like it's starting to melt the shielding, uh, that could be a possible problem you might have. Uh, another thing I would suggest doing too, another tip, get yourself some black electrical tape. Because if for some reason, like let's just take this plug here. If this plug were loose and I push it down, 
um, who's to say it might not become loose again? Because the phantom, when it's flying, creates a ton of vibration. And these wires get shaken around, and, and they could eventually jiggle loose. Fortunately, this one is it's glued in uh, by DJI, but let's just say it wasn't. If it's loose, if you get a black electrical tape or non-conductive tape, tape it. You know, push it in, make sure it's snug. Don't push real hard. Just push it down and make sure it's locked in, you know, and then put some black electrical tape on it to keep it there. Um, and you can use your pin nose pliers to do that, to get inside the cracks here and push the tape down real nice. Um, so that's what you want to do with that. Inspect everything else. And as you know, just by talking to you, um, I already can see a problem here. Notice there, and this is why I tell you to inspect. See that dent? That's a dent. And to, to confirm that, if you look underneath, you'll see the scratches here that I have. And the scratches right here, that's where I crashed my Phantom, right here. So the force caused a dent right here. Now, I don't consider that to be too severe um, of a dent here, but it definitely took damage. So I want to be thorough on inspecting these wires looking for anything that might look broken, frayed, damaged, anything, uh, as well as just kind of take a look at the Wi-Fi box here. Um, there is, there, I might even consider replacing this. Uh, not quite sure, I did, it, I did a test flight and it flew uh, for the most part fine. Uh, so I'm, I'm not feeling very uncomfortable about uh, this yet, but I'm gonna do some more inspecting uh, to see. And, you know, even inspect, because I have a den here, uh, check and see, as you can see, here's red and red of mine here, and here's red, and here's red, but you can see, looking down, right here is where I must have smashed into, because that's where the dent is, and the force must have pushed in really hard, uh, causing it to dent part of my Wi-Fi box there. So that's the point of inspecting. That's what you're looking for. Any signs of damage, issues that might indicate you got a problem. Uh, then the next thing after you do a thorough inspection with your flashlight and your magnifying glass, get yourself a can of air. Just simple computer air. Nothing special. And blow everything out like so. Blow the motors out, and while you're blowing out the motors and all, and you're inspecting, take a minute to inspect the motors. Look around, look for any signs of dents. You know, see that? What is that mark? That just looks like some dirt. So wipe that off. Uh, and you can wipe these down with alcohol wipes, as I mentioned right here. All you do is just open it up and wipe the motor down real nice. Give it a good cleaning. Blow it out with some air like so. And, you know, make sure it's running, you know, optimal. Wiggle it around a little bit. See if you sense anything loose, either with the spinning part up top or with the base. Make sure that this is on snug, that there's no signs of serious damage where this won't hold on. Uh, so definitely do that. And then what I would suggest you do is, again, with another alcohol wipe, uh, do a full inspection inside. You're looking all around. Look up. Look at the board inside there. Make sure that's nice and snug and not getting loose or nothing. Check the wires out. Check out the leads here. Take your alcohol wipe. Open it up and wipe out inside like so. Uh, for example, <laughs> what you want to do is take your alcohol wipe like this and wipe the inside of this out like so wipe these leads right here down nice and clean they get corroded over time so clean them and what you can do to get the inside of the leads take your pin nose pliers pinch it like so and then go use it to get on the inside here by going you know inside there and wiping that side of the leads down like so and give them a nice cleaning. 
uh, because like I said they get corroded and clean these two leads as well because this is what your battery connects to and this is where everything all the power comes from so you want to make sure they're nice and shiny and clean all around so inspect that inspect to making sure that this is nice and stiff and there's no signs that it's wearing shake it very lightly move it a little bit and see if it's it's you know apparently loose or anything and if it is again replace it or, or fix it um, and then once you're done with that and you know, obviously I would say inspect your gimbal unit uh, you know check the rubber here uh, make sure there's no tears anything like that and a tip for you is get yourself uh, a tie and put a tie in between you know the gimbal unit tie you know right through here and here and tie this don't tie it tight just tie it loose so it's, it wiggles I'll show you on my other Phantom that has it um, inspect everything here you have wires in here make sure they're pushed in and nice and snug obviously I got damage here uh, or else I wouldn't be bothering with this video right now but this uh, we got to replace this um, make sure you know once you do that you do a thorough inspection in your gimbal unit check your compass check the wires here make sure they're not ripped or they're not getting damaged in any way uh, make sure that they're plugged in here and it's nice and snug and that your your compass is on nice and tight um, and then you know inspect the wires going up check the tape out and do the same for your antennas uh, for your antenna over here check the tape look at the wires make sure there's no signs of awareness or fatigue uh, and obviously if there is replace it all right fellas uh, those are my maintenance checkpoints I usually will do them maybe every five to ten flights I'll pop the lid off real quick I'll run through it you know inspecting making sure nothing uh, shows any signs of awareness or weakness and if there is replace it all right so now I'm going to do a thorough inspection of mine and hopefully you're going to go do one as well and I'll be right back to continue replacing our gimbal unit and afterwards we're going to replace the two damaged motors that I want to replace here okay so stay tuned and uh, we'll continue on soon